All right. Who wants to talk about my... All right. Let's talk about... I'm going to... Well, yeah. Let's talk about top 10 lists right here. I haven't done my top 10 list. I was going to do it before I went to Vegas this week, but decided not to. I was like, you know what? I'm going to wait. I was hoping to see at least a couple more movies before, but it just wasn't happening. So there's some movies that I didn't get to see that came out, you know, the trage- uh, the tragedy of uh, Lady Macbeth, that that movie, the Macbeth movie, which, of course, Wayne T. Carr talked about. He, he went there to talk with Denzel and Francis McDormand uh, about because obviously he's a theater person. Uh, he talked about that when he showed up. Didn't get to see that. There's a lot of, there's some movies that I wish I saw, like Last Duel, didn't see. But um, I figured, you know, I'll, I'll go through my top 10 list right now. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and do this. I swear I didn't leave, I didn't leave one out this time. Remember with my Spider-Man ranking, I left one of the movies out. This time I have 10 movies. I think we're good. So there's not going to be anything messing up right there. Yes. Hit that like thumbs up. What Reyes said, do that, please. All right. Oh, thank you for showing up, Code Awesome. But uh, yeah, let's do uh, top 10 movies. And you know, there'll be some honorable mentions. Sadly, Matrix Resurrections didn't make the top 10. Uh, I like the movie, but sadly, it just didn't like it enough as some of the other movies that, are, that were on the list. I was hoping that it would make the list. I've watched it three times now. It's I definitely enjoy it, and it seems like I actually enjoy it each time I, I watch it when it comes to Matrix Resurrections. Uh, I mean, talk about n- just pure nostalgia, a n- nostalgia dump when it came to the end of of 2021 because i mean between this ghostbusters with team matrix resurrections ghostbusters and spider-man no way home it was just like pure nostalgia done pretty well to be honest because nobody's talking about halloween kills they try to do a nostalgia dump on there and that movie just fucking sucked i mean i i i just don't that it just it didn't do they try to bring back characters from the first movie and it just didn't work that's why nobody talks about that movie anymore and the fact that they tried to bring back some of the actors from there for a little nostalgia and it just didn't work. Everybody, of course, we were talking about, of course, Ghostbusters, Matrix, and yeah, Spider-Man No Way Home. So a lot of stuff like that. So um, so anyways, all right, let's go ahead and uh, let's start with number one. And it's actually the first movie, the first movie that I saw um, when it came to uh, 2021. It was actually the first movie I saw coming back to when the theaters reopened and i really enjoyed this movie uh hold on a sec let me make sure i got that up all right so it was like uh but yeah it was the first movie i saw and i really enjoyed the shit out of this movie and hopefully you guys checked it out too nobody that's right nobody of course starring um yeah, let's see. Well, let's see. Well, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Mr. Um, fuck, why am I drawing a blank on his name? <laughs> of course I am because my blank, I'm blanking out on his name. Obviously, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, um, but if you guys haven't seen Nobody, please do yourself a favor. Watch Nobody. This movie's fantastic. Um, uh, what's his name? Jeez, somebody tell me. Bob Odenkirk. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Jeez. Yeah, I'm terrible. And uh, hopefully he's doing better because he actually had like a mild like heart attack or something, something wrong with his health this over the yeah the year and stuff. Uh, yeah, hopefully he's uh, he's doing OK. But if you guys haven't seen this movie, it's got Christopher Lloyd in it. I mean, come on. Um, it's kind of like I mean, obviously, it's when you when people were seeing the the poster and everything, it was kind of uh, everybody was kind of reminded of uh, John of John Wick a little bit, but it's a little bit different. There is a scene in this movie that I was, when you, if you have a scene, a funny scene that, uh, you're going to jail, Dave. Yeah. Better call Saul. Um, no, if if there's a scene in this movie that makes me laugh well into the next scene, you have something good. You had something really good because there's a scene in here. There's something that happens in a scene where I was cracking up into the very much into the next scene. So, but yes, nobody was uh, was uh, number uh, number ten on the list right here. So, coming in number nine, Free Guy. Yes, that's right, Free Guy. Really enjoyed this movie. Wasn't sure what it was going to be about. I mean, I mean, we know what it was going to be about, but I was like, is it just going to be, you know, a bunch of visual effects and Ryan Reynolds being Ryan Reynolds? But I mean, for the most part, yeah, kind of was. But it had a lot of heart to it. There's something interesting about it. Uh, of course, Taka Waititi, I didn't really like his character. He was a little bit too over the top, but hey, whatever. But I really enjoyed the absolute shit out of this movie. And um, and they're apparently going to do a, a second one, which I'm kind of curious. Of, like, how are they actually going to do that? How are they actually going to do that? 
it just seems like this should be a one-off. And I love the fact that this movie did very well at the box office, given that it wasn't an existing IP. It was something completely different. And, of course, it got delayed many, many times. But, you know, Ryan Reynolds, of course, very likable. I mean, the whole cast. I mean, Jodie Comer, I mean... If you didn't, if you don't have a crush on her after watching this, I don't know what to tell you because I sure did. I, I would say the only weak spot of the movie was Taka Watiti was just a little too over the top. But then again, you, you kind of expect that from him. Um, I just, I just didn't. Yeah, he was just way over the top. But the visuals were great, the effects were great, and you know some of the. Uh, some of the little callbacks and some of the the Easter eggs or whatever the hell, you know, obviously there was a Star Wars thing. There was a uh, Captain America thing. And then, of course, even like uh, the cameos that show up in this movie were pretty damn great. So, yeah, for you guys, my number nine right here. Number eight, The Green Knight. That's right. Let's get a little artsy fartsy because this movie, holy shit. If you haven't seen this movie, it is dark. It is a crazy hero's journey. D uh, Patel, Mr. Patel, he does a fantastic job. David Lowry, of course, directed this movie. And it is the cinematography and just the tone, the aesthetic, the atmosphere that he created in this movie is so fucking fantastic. I hope this movie gets a lot more recognition that it, than it is getting when it comes to... Um, when it comes to when it comes to award season, because I really, really think that it should. It really should. So, yeah. So, and I really hope we see more of uh, Mr. Dev, man. Let's see more of him because he acts his ass off in this movie. Very likable character that he plays. And then he goes on this crazy mind fuck of a hero's journey. And the way that it ends is... It's a good way that it ends, that's for damn sure. Just really good stuff. You received it on 4K today? Good, as you should. Yes. Now off with your head. So uh, there you go. That's, uh, uh, that's my number eight right there. Coming in at number seven, Army of the Dead. That's right. I don't know how many times I've watched this movie this year. Seven, eight times, maybe? Something like that. Uh, maybe even more. Maybe even past ten. I don't even know. Um, but yes, Army of the Dead comes in at number seven for me because well, let's face it, it's just we've had we've had zombie movies before. Even Zack Snyder himself has directed a zombie movie, which he, you know, he 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 evolved the zombie genre. He really did. He he added something to it. He really added something to it when it came to Dawn of the Dead. So now he was going to do a fresh take. A, an original story of Army of the Dead. And not only did he just go like, okay, yeah, we're going to have a zombie outbreak, but we're going to have alpha zombies. We're going to have these, you know, we're going to ma basically make this group of zombies be different. We're going to have shamblers who are just like the stupid zombies, I guess you could say, and just want to eat everything. We're going to have zombie robots. We're going to have time loops. We're going to have fucking aliens. Fucking aliens. This movie has everything you want. Okay? Everything I want. That's for damn sure. Everything I just listed right there, zombies, robots, aliens, time loops, give it all to me, please. I'm surprised it's not higher on the list, to be honest, because this movie's so fucking satisfying. So satisfying. It's just a movie that I could put on and just absolutely enjoy time and time again. So thank you, Zach, for doing it yet again. And I can't wait for the sequels and the prequel and all that stuff. Army of Thieves, that's also one that I really enjoyed this year. Didn't make the list. Didn't quite make the list. I did like Army of the Dead better but army of thieves i watched a few times too and really enjoyed the shit out of that but you know just didn't quite make the list so samantha win oh yeah gotta love her man all right so that's uh let's see 10 9 8 7 <laughs> all right number six nightmare alley Okay, I didn't do a full-on review, but I did do a first reaction review of this movie. But this movie is absolutely fantastic. If you are craving a, a noir movie, and then just to add to it, Guillermo del Toro directing it, this is your movie right here. Do not sleep on this movie right here. This movie, I, I, I hate that it's getting buried within all the craziness that's happening in December. I really hate that because this movie... I mean, the stellar fucking cast, stellar cast. You could see it right here. This is only just four of them. But I mean, you have Willem Dafoe, you have Richard Jenkins in here. You have Ron Perlman in here. I mean, there you don't know, like this movie has everything. And this poster really reveals like a lot of things. If you notice right here, the seven sins. Oh, yeah, that is a major factor when it comes to this story. That's a major factor when it comes to the story that revolves around, of course, Bradley Cooper's character right here. But my God. If you were just craving some noir right here, I'm telling you, watch this movie. Del Toro did a fantastic job. The cast did a fantastic job. This movie is 
fantastic. I can't talk about it enough. I really can't talk about it enough. So, yeah, it's just don't sleep on it. When it when it, if you didn't catch it in theaters, make sure you catch it when it when it comes out on demand or video or something like that because it is so good, so good. So, all right, and then number five. Let's see, five, four, three, two, one. All right, five. No time to die. Ah, uh, this one. I mean, out of all, you know, when when it comes to movies, especially that came out in the last three months, movies that made me tear up, this movie made me tear up because obviously this was an end of an era, okay? My favorite James Bond is Daniel Craig, and they did a fantastic job of ending his uh, his run as James Bond. Obviously, you guys, you know, the people who saw it too and the way that it ends, yes, I got teary-eyed. I got choked up. The action is fantastic. Uh, Craig is top-notch in the movie, and uh, it's got a crazy story. It just wraps everything up, and uh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult for them to figure out who's going to top top this Bond right here. But it definitely is. I mean, it's not. Is it my favorite of the Daniel Craig Bonds? No. I would say it's probably you know it's top three for sure because you know Skyfall and uh, Casino Royale were absolutely fantastic. But I mean, this movie right here, though. I mean, yeah, it's just it's just a great way to send off Daniel Craig's Bond. I thought they did a fantastic job with it. And uh, good luck. Good luck with the next James Bond because I don't know exactly what they're going to plan on doing because this man right here just, you know, and, and the people involved in making these Bond movies just kind of just uh, kind of just blew our minds when it comes to all this. Yeah, I mean, it could be Henry Cavill. Who knows? Number four, Ghostbusters Afterlife. I mean, obviously... This movie's on here because I'm, I, I was a diehard Ghostbusters fan when I was a kid. Come on, you know. Uh, I, there's so many times I dressed up at Halloween, had Ghostbusters parties. I still, my mom probably still has crates full of Ghostbusters toys uh, and all that stuff. So this movie just touched. It just, it, it gave me that Ghostbusters sequel that I was wanting to, uh, to get when it came uh, when it came to the 2016 version, which we don't have to talk about that, but it just really hit. It hit all the uh, all the Ghostbusters feels. I've seen it twice, obviously, and every time, like both times, it just really just hit all that. I love the fact that it was a family type movie. Sorry, I got to plug in my forgot to plug in my laptop. It's I like that it was a family type movie, and I just like uh, you know obviously that final act where obviously we got the uh, the old guys to come back, and then of course we had a nice little cameo, even though it was a uh, you know a ghost, you know Egon coming back, of course. Uh, what? No, I mean, it was, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this was my number four right here, just because, I mean, let's face it, when it comes to these top ten lists, I mean, it's, sometimes it's just the feels, the feels that when it, when it comes to all this. What's going on, Tony? Good to see you, buddy. All right, number three, Spider-Man No Way Home. I mean, you want to talk about nostalgia? Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean, you saw my initial review that yeah it, it was a rough start when it comes to the story but you kind of get it you get it yeah they still had to set the story up for what was going to happen but but let's face it when 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 the the old villains start coming about i mean that's when the story really picks up and it's just you're just full of just like yay happy yay happy and then finally I, I, and you know again Anybody out there who has not seen it yet, I mean, obviously, you, you, you know that the other Spider-Men show up. I mean, obviously. Obviously, they show up. You see them underneath me. That's why I put them in the, in the, in the thumbnail. It's been three weeks. They're right there. Look at how adorable they are. Come on. Andrew Garfield, make this amazing Spider-Man 3. We want that to happen, right? We want that to happen. I love this shot of these two right here. I love Andrew so much. He steals every scene, like everyone, every scene that he's in because he's just so happy to be there. He's so, uh, so charismatic, so everything. And Toby played his part so perfectly. And then, of course, all three of them, all three of them with uh, Tom. It was just so fantastic. It really was. But I tell you what, if, uh, man, I know, I would love to get Andrew Garfield to, to interview that guy because it's just something about, he's just something about, he just seems so down earth, such a funny guy also. And just, man. But I just, I love this shot of both Toby and, and Andrew because you just see that smile on Andrew's face right there. And you see Toby, you know, being like the more veteran Spider-Man. It's just, it's just so fantastic. And uh, I mean, obviously that's what really makes the movies. Yes, all the car callbacks and there's a the fan service like crazy. But that final act is just something else. Something else. Just absolutely something else. 
Oh, man, I tell you, it's just, yeah, there's just, I can't wait to see it again. I only saw it once, but I plan on watching this movie when it, when I, when it's available, whatever the hell on video or, or everything, I'm going to plan, plan on, it's going to be one of those that I'm going to be watching time and time again. All right. Now we're down to the final two. Now, obviously you guys probably, you know, there's one specific film that I haven't mentioned yet, maybe even two that you probably think that would be in my top 10 list. So it just, is it going to, which one is going to be? You know, is it going to be number two? Is it going to be number one? I mean, there's two big films that came out this this year that have that I've not talked about that have not been on this list. So you, you could probably assume that they're going to be number one and number two. But which one is it going to be like? Which one is that one going to be? Which one is this going to be? Well, well, here we go. Number two. Dun, dun, dun. Dune. That's right. Dune is number two, because how can it not be? Denae Vulinyev, you know, beautiful movie. I've watched it twice. Uh, I should watch it more, definitely. I just, yeah, I just want them to release it in that format that it should be released. But anyways, Dune. Uh, obviously, still reading the book too, so I'll be very much prepared for Dune Part Two. So, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to hurt your ear right there. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, Jose already knew, already knew. So, uh, yeah, but this movie, uh, this is, this was something absolutely special, something different, something unique. It begins. I love the fact that the poster says it begins because hopefully this is just going to continue to be more and more stories than when it comes to the Dune universe. This cast is absolutely fantastic. The visuals. I mean, I saw this on the biggest screen that I could and this how do you make sand look so goddamn beautiful? Well, that's what Denny did. Denny made sand look absolutely beautiful. Not to mention performances, absolutely fantastic. Timothy Chalamet was great. Uh, Oscar Isaac, of course, um, was great. I mean, Jason Momoa, I would say this is probably probably one of Jason Momoa's best performances right here. I loved him as uh, Mr. Idaho. And of course, Brolin, Rebecca Ferguson. <laughs> yeah. Everything about this movie, how do you not love this movie? Especially if you wanted something, you wanted something new when it came to, uh, when it came to sci-fi. You wanted something different, you wanted something new. I mean, jeez. Yeah, I mean, he made Sand sexy. I mean, Anakin would be like, maybe Anakin Skywalker, you know, when he talks about how he hates Sand. If you watch Dune, maybe he'd be okay with Sand after that. I'm just saying, he might be okay with Sand after that. Who knows? Who knows? But... Yeah, so you t <laughs> number two was Dune. So you guys already know what's number one, right? I mean, obviously, you know what's number one since it hasn't appeared anywhere on the uh, on the list. You know, of course, it was Zack Snyder's Justice League. My God. I mean, it's not. I mean, obviously, there's more to it than just uh, just how well the how fucking fantastic the movie is. Yes. Obviously, the movie is fantastic. It is four glorious hours of our favorite heroes and Zack Snyder just just creating comic book panels of, you know, with the camera, just the way that he does it. I mean, of course, naturally. Um, what are you guys talking about? The Suicide Squad? Wouldn't that be? I should have did something like that. <laughs> I should have did something like that. Or like the Suicide Squad. That would have been hilarious. And just, uh, I'm like, I'm sorry, guys, but the Suicide Squad, Clifford the Red Dog, too? No. But, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, I know. We're See, now I'm not, Now I just got uncanceled, right, for not knowing uh, the shot of Larry Fong and uh, Zack Snyder. Uh, now now I'm uncanceled by, uh, by people, so. But, yes, so number one, my favorite film, which I've watched, I don't know, oh, close to 20 times now. Obviously, I watched it last night. I didn't watch it all because I did fall asleep. Again, I was in Vegas for four days, so I was a little sleep deprived. So sadly, I fell asleep right after Superman was resurrected. So I'll have to continue that sometime this weekend because you have to watch the whole thing. You do. But I mean, th this movie, guys, I mean, when it, again, just going back to just going back to what I was talking about before when it, you know, it comes to the restore of the Snyder Riffs. I mean, this movie is special. It's unique to any other movie that's pretty much been out there, I guess you could say, because of what it took to get it released. I mean, it's not just a, a released release movie of a director's cut, not a version of a movie that's just a director's cut that is a common thing that gets released. No, 
this was this was uh i mean the it's not even a i mean it is a director's cut essentially but i mean usually director's cuts have a couple different things i mean i guess blade runner had a little bit of a different tone i don't know but this was an entirely different movie if you watch that shitty justice wig justice wig version um it's an entirely different movie and there was something special i mean and everything that happened especially with zach and things that happened with you know him of course and his family and everything i mean it's there's really definitely something special about this movie i mean and the fact that fans rallied together, even though there was a lot of infighting that's happened and whatnot and whatever the fuck, doesn't matter. It took everybody to get this m- movie released, okay? It took everybody. I don't care if you tweeted out, re- release the Snyder Cut, the hashtag once or thousands and thousands of times. I don't care, okay? I don't care. I don't call anybody old, t- you know, the, the grassroots I've heard, no matter if you were there from the beginning or you were there right before it got announced, you were a part of this. Everybody here that enjoyed this movie and was all, you were a part of this, okay? Put all the fighting, all the disagreements aside. We all band together. We all helped get this movie made, okay? Or get this movie released, okay? We all band together, okay? And didn't let up. We all did our parts, okay? Whether it was campaigns you were a part of or whatever. My whole thing was me doing this, okay? I had the camera. I had the microphone. Anything that came out, I was talking about this movie, okay? We had Swenson. We had Stephen Colbert talking about, you know, articles that he wrote. We had Garza and the Real Anarchy guys. We had all those guys. And then people tweeting, Wonder Meg, the Nerd Queens doing Justice Con, all that stuff. We all came together together even if we all didn't fully agree with each other and helped get this movie out there. We all band together. We, we went behind Zach and just said, let's fucking do it. And we got it released. So there's something special, absolutely special about this movie that not only is it a fantastic movie, when you watch it, you go, holy shit. And a lot of people realized that when it came out. That's why Restore the Snyderverse got to 1.5 million and whatever the fuck, you know, it, or what, you know, whatever it got to. It's just, um, and that's why people... We're tweeting about the, we're tweeting that hashtag like crazy and want more because it was fantastic, but it was something special to us, man. For Autumn, it really was. It was uh, all for Autumn, and like I said, over four hundred thousand in donations to the uh, Autumn Snyder Fund. And like I said, if you want to donate more, please do. The link is always going to be under underneath uh, my video. But this this movie is uh, it's going to go down in history. This movie is going to be taught in film school. It's going to be taught about all everything that happened with that. Um, it's just it's always going to be there's going to be always something iconic about it. And, we, you know, with the saturation of so many superhero movies and everything like that, this one obviously is top tier. Some people, of course, are not going to like it just because they don't they just don't. It's weird. But a lot of people are going, oh, my God, this movie was at, to have a Justice League movie like this. Even rewatching it last night, I went, God, this movie is pure fucking cinema. When you have all these popcorn movies and popcorn superhero movies that just are like visual effects and they you know run by the numbers, and yeah, sure, that could be entertaining. I was like, God damn, this movie is just something special. It really is. Like, really is something special. Take these larger-than-life characters and kind of just break them down like Zack did, you know, and then kind of and then seeing them come together and work together as they do in this movie. I mean, he just did such a fantastic job. And the fact that even though like this might not, this movie might not have been his original plan at first and he had to tweak some things because of certain response, he still did it in such a great job where where this movie has a lot of hope, has a lot of optimism big time. But it also breaks down a lot of these characters, you know, these characters that we love so much and just makes them larger than life and so cinematic. So. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to am I am I gonna make you cry? Hopefully, you do. So there you go, guys. That's my uh, top ten twenty twenty one list right there. Obviously, the top ones there's just nostalgia, and then you had Dune that was just something just new and fresh, and just something that was just you want to talk about cinema, Jesus Christ. But but I also like the fact that Spider Man No Way Home was pretty fucking cinema too when it came to uh, John Watts did uh, a fantastic job where it's like okay, finally you get me. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed Homecoming, did not like Far From Home, but then all of a sudden you, you won me back there, sir. So, And then, of course, you had Ghostbusters and stuff like that that was right there. So there you go. That is my uh, top ten list. I will post, uh, I think, 
I don't know when I'll do it. Maybe uh, maybe tomorrow sometime, <laughs> depending on a hungover I am. No, I think I'll be all right. But I'm going to give you my top 10 anticipated list for 2022. So look forward to that. I don't do... I don't do the worst list anymore because I feel kind of slimy doing it. I don't know. I don't really care about that anymore. So, and then maybe I'll do my top list of CBMs. I don't know. So you can see where the other CBMs rank because there was only two CBMs in this list right here. So, I mean, obviously you probably, you already know number one. Yeah. And probably number two. Yeah. You know, number one and number two already, but where does Venom or Suicide Squad, where do they land? Shang-Chi, where do they land? Black Widow. I'll do a list on that too. So there you go. F9 did not make my list. Fuck that movie. 